Good morning, friends. This is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com. And I know that this video is coming out on the heels of the video I just did on Marco's Atea uh, deck. But I'm just so excited. I got up early this morning. The husband is still in bed, so he won't make noise for hours. <laughs> I won't even need to wear my headphones. So this morning's video, I'll be comparing that deck that I showcased yesterday by Marco, the Atea by Marco. And if you haven't seen it, go look at it. It's the one right before this one. And I'll be comparing it with the Grimaud, which I no longer have the box for because back in the day when we got new tarot decks, the thing to do was to discard the box and put it in a sack. You know, so that's what that happened there. But it is a Grimaud from um, the 60s, and the box was the flat box that you pull, like a telescopic box, but on the horizontal side. And then the other Atea deck that I have was a incentive deck, you know, um, for a uh, Kickstarter that Los Garabeo was doing for a Visconti deck. And as an incentive, if you bought their, their Visconti deck, they threw in a deck of uh, Atea. So why not, you know? So I got that one too. So I'm going to flip the camera and see what if any differences exist between the three. Now, unfortunately, it's a super cloudy day and I think we are expecting rain all day, so I'm not gonna have a, a sunny day today. The only deck that well, Marco's deck does come with something written entirely in French. I think it's probably stuck to the back of the deck. Yeah. So we do have a little pamphlet written in French, which I haven't translated. And the Grimaud deck, I don't think it had, when I received it, it I don't believe it had any instructions in it, and if it did, I guess I lost them. It's not like me to lose things, but um, it is possible. And then the um, Los Scarabeo deck came with cheat sheets in English, happily, but it also came with with a book, which I which appears to be oh this 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 is the book by Grimaud. Okay, so this must have been something similar to what I got with this deck. Um, but I, I'm not positive, but it says, I think this means method for reading the Granitea or the Egyptian tarot. So it was called two things, the Granitea or, or the, uh, Egyptian tarot composed or, you know, consisting of 78 cards in 118 tablets or 118 I don't know what that means. Image, uh, pages, I guess, I don't know. So, and of course this is entirely in French as well. Okay, so let's look at them one at a time. Now remember that Marco's deck is a facsimile deck. Marco used, he had access to three Atea decks, one completely in black and white, and then two that were colored. So he made the prints from the black and white and he applied his color using the better of the two quality colored originals that he found that he had access to. So here is Marco's Fool. Now it's marked zero. There's no other indent, you know, no other markings around the card. And on the bottom it's upside down, the same word and the zero. With the Grimaud, or Grimaud, we have a few additional things. It's numbered zero, but somebody decided to put 78 in the corners. And of course we have Grimaud over there. There's no date on these cards though. Oh, let's show the backs of all three, we might as well. This color is um, like a pale Bahama pink beige with blue markings. This is as you see it, and this one is lovely also. Okay. 
So we have the same space around the image. If we look at the quality of the image, we see that this is more painterly because it was applied, the color was applied with a brush and not flat printed ink. So we see differences in the ground. So of course, when Grimaud, you know, made the decision to reprint the deck, you know, they maybe somebody went in and reworked to clarify, you know, the face or some details that were, you know, maybe less refined, you know, le less defined. You can see, let me see if we can get the light on. You can see like, pixelation, you know, of the, of the background. So you can see that it was printed um, differently. And then this card. Now, the um, Los Scarabeo, I, it seems like, uh, regrettably, they made a decision to tint, like, tint the color uh, of the background to make it appear aged, I guess. But I, I, I think it detracts, definitely detracts. Now with this one, again, like the Grimaud, which I guess it based itself on the Grimaud, um, has 78 in the corner. Looks like it borrowed heavily from the colors of the Grimaud. Or Grimaud, I'm not sure how to say it properly, so I apologize. Now here we see a big difference. So they, when, when Grimaud got their hands on it, they decided to really overemphasize the sun popping through. The Ateas deck is more like just light coming through. Like when we were watching the eclipse and the clouds would break, we would see light, just a burst of light coming through. But here they made a decision, it seems, to actually show the sun itself, as did the Los Scarabeo. Now, we'll notice that the original, because this is a facsimile deck, remember, the original, when you flip the card upside down, in error perhaps, had the word printed orient it incorrectly to see it upside down, but the other two decks compensated for that, and so they reversed the words so it could be read upside down. Now the um, Atea deck, the facsimile deck by, by um, Marco, we recall, is, is just what was on uh, what was on Atea's card is what is on Marco's card. So there was this little glyph here, and the image is the same, colored in much the same way. And in the Grimaud, they translated the word to give us an English idea. Um, they left. They 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 used the French word. I guess because this has an accent, so I, I imagine they maybe used uh, another French word that was maybe more more modern than the words. Or you know, well, actually, this was just his name and just like indicating that it was the uh, querence card. But in the, okay, so in the Los Scarabeo deck, they did honor the, the word that Atea had on the bottom. They didn't translate anything. But what they did, aside from reimagining re the, the burst of sunlight through the clouds, is they also reoriented or corrected the way the word uh, question it, you know, the querent name, you know, they reoriented how that should look. Hmm. 
Now, a few, I don't know if I'm saying it right, perhaps means something similar to passion because that's the word they use here. And this word means enlightenment. But the Grimaud still retains the little symbols and the same number and those little words, I think in the hand of Atea, I think that is in Atea's hand, his handwriting. Now, I'm not sure if, yeah, they they redid the, the letters here. It's in the fashion of how Atea wrote it, but it, they didn't reproduce Atea's hand here. And then um, these other two appear to have given more definition to the star. So somebody went in and reworked, reworked it to give greater definition. And to the people too, the children, the children as well. So this might be a long one. What I might do, I might do two videos back to back. Um, one showcasing the triumph cards and the other one, the suits. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so here we have what appears to be the moon, right? Um, again... The Grimaud just makes it a little more, you know, a little easier to pick up, you know, what that is. Um, the crustacean is also a little more well-defined than here. And... The Los Scarabeo retained the original word, although it's not in it's not in um, Atea's hand, but he left the same notations, even though they're not in Atea's hand, but they mimicked it as well as I guess they could. And however, when we flip the card, let's see. Again, Atea's has an error, right? That it's not written upright like it which should be if we're to really read the card upside down, right? And they adjust it for that in in the uh, Los Scarabeo deck. But here they add it, in these other two reproductions, they add it words up top that we don't have on the original Atea deck. And then they gave us, you know, in, you know, definitions that Atea didn't give us and stability in English. This one did retain the U. E-A-U. I always thought that meant water, but I guess it does mean water if it's showing the moon. I don't know what propo means, but perhaps propo means instability. I don't know. I think the Los Scarabeo would have really hit a home run if it weren't for the darkened the darkened edges, I think it really kind of was a big mistake. Okay, number four card is um, the star card, I presume. And again, we have the symbols within. We still have the 69 or the, the cancer symbol rather. And we have, you know, the Grimaud gave it a, gave it different gave it an English name, and then maybe a more modern French name. Is, is that what they might have done for Revelation? Whereas the Los Scarabeo retained the Atea language, and they, they didn't use the same hand, but they retained the same language. And let's flip the card upside down. Well, let's let's look at the color. So it's they're both nicely colored, but I think we see a, a greater refinement in 
in the reproductions than we see in the original. And then when we flip them upside down, we have air and air. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that the Los Scarabeo, for the most part, retained the French language of the, of the original Atea deck, right? Um, but they did take some liberties. I think what they did was they repeated what was above on the top card. I think they just repeated it on the bottom card too. I mean, on the reversal of the card. And the Grimaud seems to be the odd man out because they flat out modernized, perhaps, I think, I think if I am understanding what I'm seeing, is perhaps they modernized the French word and then they gave us an English equivalent. Now, probably if I were to read this deck, and I know some of you would love to see me do a demonstration reading with this deck, but... I have reasons for not. Number one, um, you know, it, it, this deck goes on the whole, it came from Egypt fantasy mythology, you know, which I don't subscribe to. And with it, you know, um, also there's, you know, associations perhaps with Kabbalah and also with astrology. And I just don't, I just don't concern myself with those aspects of, of tarot reading. So I would never utilize or be able to fully demonstrate how, you know, Atea would have, how, how he would have used the cards himself. So for some reason, they decided to make the lion blue in the reproductions. So I presume this is the world card, which the Leo assignation is given and again with the original the reversed word is doesn't appear proper I think it, I think it gets corrected a little later on in the deck so I'm not going to comment on every word change because I'll let you see those for yourself because otherwise we'll be here all day It's interesting because the new, on the Nuit side, we have Atea's hand writing this on the reversal, but not at the top. And the Grimaud took it from the bottom and put it up top as well. Ed, and I think I bet you they did too. Yeah, they did too. So there may have been some errors, you know, in the extent um, Atea deck. You know, like printing errors perhaps. So this is some kind of celestial event, like some kind of comet or something traversing the, the sun. And we see the little, is that a ram's head? You know, like a Aries? Or is that Taurus? I don't know. And then what's this? Is this Virgo or Scorpio? See, I don't know. I'm, I'm not familiar enough. I don't concern myself with astrology, so I don't know. You know, my interest in the Atea is truly from a historic point of view. I'm fascinated that we would have a facsimile deck as close as could possibly be to a deck that the deck that Atea used, right? I mean, the, the original deck that this is based on was published in 1888, I think, and he died in um, 1891. And this has his address and his name all over it, so he had to have sanctioned it. He, he had to have approved it, right? So it has to have been his deck. He was alive when it came out. And we can see some differences here. And especially in the head of this alligator. I don't know why they gave it a bump. So the Los Garabeo is clearly based on the Grimaud. And the Grimaud is loosely based on the original. 
but you know, there's really no comparison between Marco's deck and these, both of these. First of all, the texture. We have a smooth back, and you know, just the quality of cardstock even. We have a textured front, we have a smooth back. Um, and we have a real painterly feel to the color. And here we just see the pixelation of, of the uh, of the print, the way the print was applied. I, I guess pixelation is probably not the correct word, but I'm not a very technical person, so I don't use right words sometimes. Again, when we reverse Ateas, we don't have the proper reversal of the word. So we have two cards named Atea, one for the female querent and one for the, ma the, the male querent. The male querent was number one, and this one is number eight. I think this is number eight. So the female querent is number eight, and the male querent, I believe, was number one. Now we have big changes here. Now look at the detail in her face, right? It's a suggestion of a face where someone, when they, you know, model this deck, they, they just put more detail. And they do that with, you know, uh, Pamela Coleman, Coleman Smith's decks, right? When they reworked the deck at some point, they took out her hand, the letters, right, that she hand lettered, and then they refined certain faces or certain details or they didn't refine them, you know, and they lost some of the detail of the original in the Pamela Coleman Smith deck, so. Okay, so again, we see justice, we can identify justice, and then when we reverse the card, the reversed meaning in English that we see in the Grimaud is lawmaker, so somebody who's in law. And then in the original Atea, the reversed word is not printed proper. So who knows that, you know, by virtue of the, of perhaps this deck was, you know, this, this extent deck perhaps was a mistake, you know, and, and, you know, because they caught the, you know, maybe they realized, oh, this was a printing error, you know, so shove it in a, use it for book binding or something like that. Like so many of the other decks that we find or that we have access to is only because the, the, re, the rejects were used for book binding. And that's how we, you know, that's the only reason why we have some of these decks at all. So is that a possibility? I don't know. I don't know where the original Atea deck that was used for this printing, um, how it was saved, you know, what purpose did it serve? You know, was it, you know, it in book binding or what? So again, we see the suggestion of a, I mean, it's beautiful. We see both written on the waist. Let's see what we have here. Here we have the same. And the facial features are still a little vague. They modified the, the image on the top, the, the burst of light on the top. We have both written on the belt or thought. And like the Grimaud. They modified the light. Now on her wings in the in the original, it looks like we have the shape of a, a crescent moon in her wing. Doesn't it? And in reverse, what does this suggest? Conviction. Convictions. They changed the color of the floor. I mean, there might have been variety in the two, in the two original 
color plates that Marco had. I don't know if they were both colored with the, with the use of the same colors or not, so I can't speak on that. Again, the face is suggested, but not as well defined as they are in these decks. And a reversed scalloped edge. <laughs> Popularity. Hmm. So the Atea upright is marriage. In reverse, it's union, so it's not necessarily a marriage. But in the Grimaud, they give it liaison, like love affair. So they, they give it a different connotation than I think. Oh, and then this card finally. Oh, okay. Now this card is the first card in the original where the word is properly printed for a reversal. Now we lose the definition of that niche in the background. It could be to, due to the age of the card. And perhaps Grimaud, you know, just enhanced it like many card makers will do. They'll take a, they'll take an original, you know, and they'll they'll enhance it to bring it to life, right? So it could be argued that the Grimaud brought back to life, you know, what was lost to time. And both kinds of decks are important to have. I have both kinds, you know. I have several reproductions of several decks, and some are true, you know, facsimiles, and then some are enhancements, you know, so it's, it's, it's done across the board with all decks. And, and every time a publisher reduce, reintroduces a deck, they, you know, they add, they add what they think will enhance the deck. Well, now the magician translates to chagrin or malady. Well, malady, which is like misfortune, I guess. And then in English, they've trans they've they've given it a new word in French, chagrin, and then they show they show it as sorrow. And then in reverse, it, the malady references illness. Huh. So in the original Atea, the word means the same thing upright and in reversed for the magician card but new new meanings were given with both the grimaud i don't know just with the grimaud because as i mentioned that los Beo seems to be more closely mimicking the original now this has 15 here and 16 here <laughs> so i don't know what that's about Now, isn't it funny that judgment would mean opinion? I guess you could see the word opinion for judgment. And then the reversal 
Atea gives it the same the same meaning. But the Grimaud gives arbitration. So it gives it a different meaning. Of the two reproduction decks, I think I prefer the Grimaud, and I think probably a lot of people would disagree with me <laughs> because um, it, it took liberties with the language. But, you know, uh, I like it better because of the color, not because of the language, but because of the color. But in, oh, now look at this death card. I love this death card. This death card is something else. Now, I don't know what neant means. Oh, probably birth. Okay. N you know, maybe it means birth upside down. And upright, it means death. Let's see what they call it here. Incapacity. Mm. Well, I could be wrong about birth. <laughs> The center deck, the uh, Grimaud deck, I, probably, I, I'm sure it's out of print, you know, at least this version, I'm sure is out of print by now. Um, this one would be hard to get because, because it was only available as a Kickstarter. So unless you were in on that Kickstarter, you won't have this deck. Or unless you're able to find it on eBay, you, you, you know. So these two decks are like probably just as expensive as if you were to buy this one, you know, because they're out of print or they're no longer in circulation, you know? So even though this is a superior deck, these both might be just as, as expensive. So if you're trying to say, oh, I'd love to have one of these decks and I wanna go for the less expensive one, they may not be less expensive just because, you know, they're not hand done. Now, um, I mean, this one really feels like it's handmade. I mean, the. I mean, I don't. I'm not saying that you know Marco sat there with each card and hand painted each card. I mean, he would have painted an original sheet, you know, and then printed them that way, you know. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I think when all was said and done, um, I think, I, you know, I think the Marco's, I don't know, what did it cost? I, I'm not really sure. I think it cost, it probably cost $100 or really close. I'd have to check my account to see what it was. I think, it, but I think it was, you know, pretty close to 100 but as I mentioned, these other decks may cost just as much to find since they're out of print, you know, or they're no longer in circulation. Here we have the tower, misery, poverty. So the Grimaud gave it the definition of poverty. And they all seem to have given the reversal prison. So the meanings are different. And, you know, I guess it, I shouldn't shy away from reading it because the meanings are right on the cards. I mean, how, how easy can it be, I guess, you know, in a sense. But the thing is, I already have my understanding, you know, of what the cards mean. And I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't go for the whole Egyptian mythology and stuff like that. So, um, but I guess, it, I guess it really wouldn't be so hard to 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 use because all you have to do is look up the French word, right? And if you have the Grimaud, you, you have the words right there, you know? So, um, augmentation versus fortune. And the word they, yeah, they kept the same word there. It's a cool Wheel of Fortune card though, isn't it? It's a pretty interesting Wheel of Fortune card. And 
I think the chariot is the last card in the triumph succession. So obviously, the you know the Ateya has different numeric assessments. Remember, Ateya and the occultists were trying to correct the corruption <laughs> of the Tarot de Marseille deck, which I think they saw as the Tarot deck. You know, um, completely dismissing the fact that the deck came from Italy, or the game came from Italy, right? The Tarot deck, the Tarot deck came from Italy, right? So it was completely dismissed that that was its history and its origin. And so the French came up with their fantasy of, or their mythology of it coming from, you know, Egypt and, you know. So I think I'm going to stop this video right here. And um, based on your comments, if you want to continue to see the, um, you know, the uh, other cards, the pip cards, then I'll do another deck. Excuse me, I'll do another video showing the pips. But um, if, I think if I do something like this, it's probably enough for you to see how they how they differ. Well, their language will differ, and the way the cards are colored will differ. Until next time, friends, peace, stay well, be kind, and do no harm. And I hope you like this video, and please give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, please share. You know, don't copy my material, you know. I, I, I know, uh, <laughs> I know, um, you know, do, do your own thing, be you, you know. Um, I know some of you have mentioned that you're, you know, you're inspired, by, you know, by my work, and I'm greatly greatly flattered by that. Truly, I am. Um, but, you know, don't, don't copy my ways, you know, and don't, you know, don't uh, do the same videos I do, you know, come up with your own original work, right? People love, you know, um, just be you, just be you, you know. Until next time, I said it already. <laughs> See you soon.